Hi, I'm Lucy from the Vintage Sew Money and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a simple butcher's apron. There are three different sizes ranging from toddler to adult which use between a fat quarter of fabric and three quarters of a metre. You'll also need three metres of bias binding for the adult sizes and two for the child and toddler and a simple template or I will show you an alternative method of using measurements if you don't have access to a printer. It'll take around half an hour to make so really quick and inexpensive expensive but super practical make. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the shape for the apron from the fabric. Now I've cut my fat quarters down, so for the toddler apron, which I'm going to do in this blue dinosaur fabric, I've cut down to a 40 centimetre wide by 50 centimetre tall um, rectangle which I could fit comfortably on a fat quarter. Then for my child's apron, I, child size apron, I have used again a fat quarter. I was able to do this because there is no pattern direction or the pattern direction didn't matter for this one so I've been able to use um, again a fat quarter and that is 50 centimetres wide by 65 centimetres tall. So I'm going to use this simple template to remove the negative space at the top of those rectangles to create the armholes. If you don't have access to a printer, I've got a really simple way of doing that. So if you are using the template, and I'll pop it in the comments below where you're able to download this from, you just need to cut out the correct size for the apron that you are creating. So I'm going to cut out the child size because it's the slightly larger one and then for when I do the toddler apron I can then cut down my existing template. So I'm going to do this in the leopard print. So to do this I'm going to take the top of the apron, now it doesn't matter too much with this fabric because it hasn't got a particular direction. I'm going to fold it in half. So on the top corner of the apron, once it's folded in half nicely, I'm going to place that template and you could either use um, an air erasable pen uh, or heat erasable pen or a tailor's chalk or you could simply pin and um, cut. So I'm just going to mark out that template. Probably be easier if I did these markings on the wrong side of the fabric as it's slightly lighter but I can just about make out that purple line. And I'm going to cut that negative space out. So I'll get a shape that looks a little bit like that. And then I'm ready for the next stage of hemming the flat edges of the apron but first I'll show you how to measure out your own template. So if you don't have access to a printer what you need to do is put your fabric right sides together this will make making markings easier so if you're planning on doing lots of these of batch making them then what you could do is create a paper template at la like I'm doing on the fabric so again I have got my um, a erasable pen and a ruler. So like with the um, other tem with the template, I folded the fabric in half and I'm using the top um, corners of the apron fabric. So for my toddler apron, I'm going to measure 10 and a half centimetres from the open edge. So this is my folded edge. So this is going to be where the armholes sit. I'm going to put a little marker and I want to measure down 15 and a half centimetres like that and all I'm going to do is just create a sort of curve with my air erasable pen like that. So this is why it's definitely better to do it on the wrong side of the fabric if you're using something like a tailor's chalk or something that maybe doesn't come out as easy. If you do make a slight error then it doesn't matter and I'm going to cut out in exactly the same way as I was doing when I was using my template guide. And again, I get that nice apron shape and I'm ready to go on to pressing my straight edge hems. So 
So for all the flat edges of the apron, I'm going to be using a double fold hem or narrow hem. Um, I'll start with the top as obviously this is the more straightforward and then we'll go on to the sides and the bottom where we'll do some extra work at the corners. So I've got my apron face down onto the ironing board and I'm going to turn over the top edge of the apron by a centimetre and a half. And I'm just going to use my ruler to get a guide for that because it's not always as much as you think it is. So I'm just going to flick back that line that I've just pressed and what I'm going to actually do is tuck the raw edge of my fabric into the crease and then tuck it in again. So it's a really narrow and fine hem which is where it gets its name narrow hem from and it's doubled over so all those fraying edges or potential fraying edges of your fabric are tucked in. This is definitely a make that will get washed and worn again whether you get paint on it or slime or tea or whatever your child's using it for whether you're using it to do baking so we want to make sure that it stands the test of time and I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in there to keep it in place while I sew so when I am coming to do the other straight edges so the sides and the bottom of the apron I'm going to repeat that same process so I'm going to start off with a 1.5 centimeter hem So what I'm going to do, just to neaten those corners that I've just done on all overlapping fabric, is just reduce a little bit of the bulk. So I'm going to fold back those creases I've just made and you'll get a little bit of sort of a checkerboard effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the tip of that corner at a 90 degree angle, just following um, from those creases. And I'm going to fold it back together and just check that I'm happy that it's now sitting nice and flat and that there's no excess fabric sort of peeping out onto the um, right side. So I'll just give that a little press, but I think I'm quite happy with that. So it's perhaps not as neat as a mitre corner, but for a small project like this, it's a really nice, quick um, fix to making the corners sit flat and just look a little bit neater. So I am nice and happy with that, both on the back and on the front, and I'm ready to do my hems. So there is no set seam guide for the hems but what you want to do is you want to make sure that your needle is coming really fairly close to this internal folded edge so not near kind of the outside of the apron or in the middle but really quite close to here. So you might want to identify um, a good guide on your machine. Everybody's will be slightly different depending on how you have folded that. Now I'm not going to do any reverse stitches on the edges of mine because it's quite a a tiny little hem and I don't want it to get pushed down into the machine and sort of tangled up and in our next stage we're going to be securing those edges with the bias binding tape so don't worry too much about 
reverse stitching to secure the end. So as you approach the corner, you want to make sure, again, that you're going to be sitting your needle when you turn the corner, really on this turn, internal edge. So you might want to do this last little step by hand or just gentle taps on your machine pedal and then make sure that needle's dropped before you turn it and pivot it. So you're in a really nice position here to continue onto that bottom edge of your apron. Again, as it gets to this final corner, I'm just taking it nice and slow. And then trot, swivel. And I want to be sewing that final edge of the apron. All the way up until I get to that armhole. So now you have hemmed the top edge and the sides and bottom of your apron. It's ready to add the bias binding tape which will form um, both the finished edge of the strap but also the neckband and the ties that fasten the apron. So I'm doing two metres on this toddler apron and I've chosen an accent colour from the fabric but obviously you could choose whatever colour you want. It could blend in nicely or could really pop one of the, the features of the fabric out. So I'm going to take my two metres and I'm going to take the wrong side of the bias binding and I'm going to fold it in half all the way down the full length of that two meters. So for the older child, or the child's apron, I'm gonna use about two and a half, and for an adult, you might want to use more. It will all depend on who you are making it for. Um, so the best thing you can do is just experiment and just take your bias binding and pop it round your neck and just have a go at, at, at tying um, those straps and see how much it is you need. But anywhere between two to three meters is plenty. So now we've prepared the apron, the fabric and the bias and now we need to join those two things together. So I'm just going to find the centre point of my bias binding tape. So I'm just going to move my hands along keeping those ends together and find the central point and just squeeze it together and just create a little crease so that I've got um, and I identified the middle or you could pop a pin in or a little pen marker with your air erasable pen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure 20 centimetres down from that central point. Now I'm doing a toddler's apron so it's quite small. So what I would advise doing if you've got um, your child or the person you're making this apron to at hand is just measure this on their neck before you commit to sewing it. So I'm going to measure about 20 centimetres down from one side from my central crease and then 20 centimetres on the other side. And this will be the neck hole. So I'm going to put the open ends of that bias. I'm going to open the ends up and I'm going to tuck that fabric on the sides, the raw edges that we've done nothing with up until now. And I'm just going to put the raw edge of the blue fabric up to the crease that we've just created with the iron. Like that. And I'm just going to put a pin in. Oops. and then just move my 20 centimetre marker pin like that and adjust it 
So if you are going to test it on somebody, you want to get these sets of pins in now and then give it a good test. So on the other side, again, I'm going to pop the fabric in right up until that crease and just make sure you've got no twists in your bias binding now. Like that. And at this stage, I would just try that around um, the neck of these just to make sure that it's not too baggy so this bit doesn't sag too low and equally does fit over the head and it's not too tight. And once you're happy with it, you can continue pinning that armhole. So just pushing the crease of your bias all the way up to the raw edge of your fabric. And then all the way down the other side as well. And then we're ready to sew the final step of the apron. So for the last line of stitching, we're gonna go all the way from one end of your bias binding, around the armholes, the neck hole, and all the way down the other side, right into the end in one big line of stitching. Now this is personal preference for this stage, but I'm gonna do quite a broad zigzag. So on my machine, my basic zigzag is setting four. And then what I want to do is I want to change the length so that the stitches are about two millimeters apart. And the width of my stitch is about five. So on most machines, that's as high as it will go. So it's really straddling the bias binding tape. And as I put the, the bias binding under the machine, I want my bias to be sort of in the middle. So what I would massively recommend is doing a test piece or so maybe getting a scrap of bias binding or some fabric and just having a feel. So you might want to have a decorative stitch on here, you might want to have a straight line, but this is my sort of personal preference. And then I just want to make sure it's going nice and widely across that bias binding. 